Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 656. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, I'm going to share with you a question that a young person had about continuing to contribute to his 401k or saving for a down payment on a home and why I have a different opinion than the advice all of the other experts gave him. Recently, I came across a question that was on yahoo.com, and it was this. I'm a single 27-year-old male. I am beginning to save for a down payment on a home. I currently contribute about 17% to my 401k. While that is great, it doesn't leave me much room to save for a new home. I am looking for perspective about lowering my 401k contributions to help save up for a down payment on a home versus maintaining 401k and lengthening my home buying timeline. Well, I won't read you the rest of the article, but there were several experts that all weighed in and each one of them said, stop contributing or contribute less to your 401k. And I'm going to disagree with all of them. And I'll tell you why. As you know, I often talk about the wealth building formula and the most important part of that is the compounding part. And when you have time on your side and you're a young person, that means you can compound for the longest period of time, which means it's going to be the cheapest for you and the easiest for you to grow wealth over time when you start young. So to discontinue his 401k payment is going to mean that he's going to have to start later. And here's what I mean. He's 27 right now, and he doesn't say how much he earns. He doesn't say how much he's contributing to his 401k, only that it's 17%, which is fantastic. That's great. And he's already getting a good start on contributing healthily to his retirement. But we don't know how much he earns and we don't know how much he's already put into his 401k. But let's just say he was contributing $5,000 a year at 10% over 40 years that would grow to $2.6 million. If he waited until 35 to start contributing $5,000 a year, earned the same 10%, but contributed for eight years less because he started later, He would not have $2.6 million. He would have $1.2 million. Now, he would have put in $40,000 less, but he's missing $1.4 million from that late start, that extra time of compounding that he's not getting. So you see, telling him to stop contributing to his 401k is going to cost him essentially $1.4 million. That's if he could start up again at 35, assuming he had enough for his down payment and could have afforded his house and saved his money in eight years. Now, the other thing we don't know in this question is how much the down payment is. Nobody asked him, how much are you making now and how much is your down payment going to be? So the very first thing he needs to do is set a goal. How much does he need for his down payment? Now, that is typically going to be a function of the cost of the house. And so many people will say a 10% or 20% down payment, but there are loan programs that for first time buyers give you different opportunities. For example, when I bought my first home, I only had to put down a 3% down payment. So what I would say would be for him to meet with a mortgage broker and find out as a first time buyer what the deals are out there and if he in fact can put down less. So we need to know what his goal is. We need to know how much the house is going to cost. We need to find out exactly how much he needs to save up so he'll know when he reaches his goal. Otherwise, we have no idea how much he really needs to save. The next thing he needs to do is find a way to make more money. 
continue to make the 17% contribution, but is there a way to make more money? For example, is he planning to get a promotion? If he gets a promotion and a raise, that differential in his salary he could use to save for his down payment. If he had some sort of a side hustle or a hobby that he could turn into a side hustle and get paid for, that would be an additional way to save for his down payment. For example, maybe he coaches uh, some kids on the weekend at a particular gym and the gym pays him. So he actually has fun coaching the kids to play basketball or something and he gets a check for it. That money could be used for his down payment. The next question we need to know is, what kinds of things is he spending his money on? Because we don't know what his discretionary income is, we don't know if there's other things that he is spending money on that he doesn't have to spend money on. Maybe he could cut expenses. So if there's something that he's been funding that is a very expensive hobby, or he has three cars, maybe he could sell off two cars. There's different things that we need to know about him, but there might be some unused assets that he could get rid of, or there could be some monthly expenses that he could cut, or he could also put off major purchases. Like if he was planning to buy a Peloton bike or something that's $2,500, maybe put that off and put that into your down payment fund. The next thing he could do is talk with his parents. Now, I'm not talking about him asking them for money. I'm talking about him asking them if they want to make an investment. And here's what I mean. When I was younger, my second home that I wanted to buy was a brand new condominium. It was new construction. I loved it, but it was out of what I could afford. But I had a good job and I had a high income. I just didn't have my down payment saved up. So I asked my mother if she would loan me money. And what I did was offered to pay her a higher than market interest rate. So she would be my banker. I would loan money for my down payment and I would pay her much more interest than she could get in the bank. At that time, interest rates, I think were around 4% and I gave her 8%. So I was happy because I got the money I needed for my down payment. She was happy because she got double the interest that she would get having the money in the bank. And we set up an amortization schedule that showed when I would make each payment and what would happen if I was late or if I didn't make a payment, which of course I would never do. She knew I was responsible and good for the money. So what I did was set up that amortization schedule that showed me what my payments were to her over five years, and I paid her off in five years. She was happy. I was happy. It was a win-win. So that's something that you could talk to your parents about that they might be able to do for you. And here's the final piece of advice. Don't loan money from your 401k for a down payment on your home. Although it is allowed, If you leave your employer, you have to pay that money back right then. And if you don't have that money, you'll be charged as if you took withdrawals prior to age 59 and a half from your 401k. So you'll have a 10% penalty plus you'll owe tax on the money. So that's my reasoning why I differed from the other experts. I hope you liked my explanation. When I saw that they all told him to contribute less to his 401k or stop contributing to his 401k, my brain exploded. (laughs) All I could think about was, of course, the wealth building formula, money compounding in time, and how that was really messing up a super great situation that he already had set up for himself by starting to contribute 17% to his 401k at age 27. If you haven't subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified and won't ever miss a podcast. And don't forget, our holiday review contest is going on where I'm giving away 20 different prizes and your chances of winning are really great. You could win my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets valued at $197. You could win the Wealth Heiress book signed and personalized by me. This was named one of Book Authority's best wealth books of all time. Or you could win a wealth mentoring session with me. All you need to do is leave a podcast review that will get your name in the drawing one time. 
or you can leave a book review on Amazon and that will get your name in the drawing two times. Winners will be announced on the first podcast in January. And since it is the end of the year, people have been thinking about their finances and making some changes for next year. I've had some inquiries about the VIP experience. I put a button on the front page of my website that gives you a little bit of an insight into what's included in the VIP experience and a special year-end deal for you. So now is the time, if you've been thinking about it, just go to my website at lyndapjones.com and look for the What is the VIP Experience button on the front of the website with a photo there. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.